Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, the official Bianca 39 TV. You're back. Oh, welcome back. Before we start the video, go ahead, subscribe, like, and share. You know the routine, three little steps, and then we can get started. I'll give you a moment, and we can begin. Thanks for subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can see by this title, is it worth it? Going to Columbia, Columbia Graduate Journalism School in New York City, is it worth it? I'm gonna let you know. Before you spend your hard earned coins or your parents, this is the video you definitely wanna watch. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I wanna show you the most expensive piece of paper I own, this diploma. <laughs> Do y'all see that? <clears throat> it says, the trustees of Columbia University in the city of New York. Be it known, be it known, that Bianca, middle and last name, having completed the studies and satisfied the requirements for the degree of Master of Science, we have caused our corporate seal to be here affixed in the city of Nueva York on the 8th day of February in the year 2017 of our Lord. the most expensive piece of paper I own, okay? <sighs> Y'all know the interlude from Kanye? You got degrees on degrees on degrees. <laughs> Are those degrees gonna keep you warm at night? No, Kanye, but you know, still the knowledge is something they can never take away from you. <laughs> well, let's get into it. Y'all already know the story on why I went to journalism school, again, to change careers. Columbia University was the only school I applied to I looked into its program, I saw that it had a joint program. You can actually do a dual degree with the journalism degree and an MBA. So that's what even sparked my interest in their program. And of course, all of their distinguished alumni um, because they really do have just a roster and roster of people, um, which is really an honor to walk through those same halls as them. But is it worth it? Is Columbia Graduate Journalism School worth it? Because it is a pretty penny. A shiny one, an expensive one, I might add. But I divide this video into pluses and minuses. And of course, I have my conclusion. You gotta wait to the end. But we'll get to that conclusion. You'll kind of see um, how one outweighs the other. Which one will it be? Hmm. The positives. Um, number one, the people. You are going to meet a a very concentrated of highly devoted and passionate people at. Uh, Columbia. Uh, from the students that you're in class with to the professors, everyone there has that mindset of, you know, journalism, of ethics, of wanting to do the right thing, of wanting to produce great work. So you're going to meet professors there who have won Pulitzers, who have won Emmys, who've won AP awards, whether it's Peabody awards, investigative journal, I mean, they run the gamut. You're going to have people teaching you and instructing you and guiding you towards, you know, the steps of success like I want somebody I want to learn from somebody who's done it and the professors there have done it um they've been in the industry they're probably currently still in the industry which is great because they are always aware of what's happening I think another positive is the people you're in class with you are going to be in class with people who maybe were already in the field you're going to be in class with people who ran their school newspaper you're going to be in class with people who were in the military I think that was something that allowed us to have a very diverse diverse group of thinkers in the room whenever there was a discussion um, and no one was ever really afraid to speak their truth even if you disagree with the professor I mean there were a couple of times where you know you may not agree and that's okay but it's good to have that discourse and I think that a lot of professors there were open to having that so that's number one the professors and the people a plus a great thing that uh, this school has to offer is just the caliber of people that you're going to be surrounding yourselves with and I think that helps you become better so even if you aren't on that mindset and you weren't thinking about one day winning you know a Pulitzer award that's okay they may they're going to get you on that mindset to start thinking that way and to really look at things with a very keen and cr critical um, uh, a critical eye so I think that is key 
Uh, another plus, exposure. You're gonna get a lot of exposure to a lot of people in different industries. I remember one of our courses that we had, which is like a, was like a, um, it wasn't an elective course, but it was one of those courses where it didn't take up the whole semester. And it was about engagement and uh, social engagement which now I think they've moved to like a longer course because of course everybody now has to work the web or you know social engagement learn how to partner that with to get their articles and their work out there uh, but you know one of our professors and presenters for that you know was someone who created a whole platform was from Vine Pair and um hey Adam <laughs> little shout out and uh, so it was an honor to have him teaching that course and showing us you know how he was able to launch this platform of a very um, unique uh, industry um, that a lot of people love. I think it was very um, beneficial to have him come into the class and, and to actually lead our class and have different discussions. I mean, he was bringing people in from the industry, from different platforms and, and um, different outlets that really allowed us to get into the analytics of how things are work or how things work now. Um, and we talked about hey social media and how that plays into a lot of things i think the exposure to so many different people across uh different platforms from a cnn a very traditional uh media you know outlet to a small up-and-coming brand and platform like a vine pair like a vice that's now big and major um but you're able to see that growth um so i think that exposure to a wide gamut of of a wide gamut of media outlets is unmatched and is very, very important. Three, uh, the career connection. So I think the point with going to school, after you go to school, you're not just trying to be a great journalist with all this stuff in your mind and sitting on the corner um, begging for change. That's nobody's goal, right? You want to be able to hit the ground running and go into a newsroom or create your own uh, medium or be a freelancer and be able to produce high quality work. Essentially, I think my experience was learning skills uh, to hit the ground running. I think Columbia provided that for me. It was almost like kind of learning a trade. Um, now this trade is something that yes, you can have a natural ability in you could have picked up that trade in undergraduate school you could have picked up you know great skill set even in high school now they got great programs media multimedia classes in high school but for me i needed to have a certain skill set and i wanted to get it in a certain amount of time and columbia provided that for me so for me i knew okay leaving here i need to be able to do x y and z and they were able to meet those requirements for me and provide connections to some great outlets. So whether it was an internship with Viacom, whether it was an internship with NBC Universal, they will, they have those connections. Of course, you have to close the deal. All right, you can't be going up in there and you don't have your stuff together. No ma'am, no sir, you will not. But if you have your stuff together, if you've listened, if you've taken that advice, if you've talked with, you know, mentors, you've talked with professors and gotten, you know, that kind of um, insight on how to best market yourself to a certain company, then you're going to be successful. Uh, there's very few people who left without a job, without at least freelancing. Um, now, something full time, I think that was that that's just as a struggle for the industry overall there are less and less full-time opportunities for um, whether it is production whether it is even just reporters and journalists you know you're not gonna leave here and maybe I think maybe in the past an overwhelming majority of people left and went and worked for a newspaper that was very few people um, that I knew personally that went and worked for a print publication a lot of people worked for multimedia platforms whether it was online whether it was freelancing for production companies um, so I can't say 100 or everybody I knew left and had a full-time job but I think an overwhelming majority of people that I knew at least had some type of work in the field it might have been freelancing it might have been a contract gig but they had something um, now I think that's with the industry changing, it's, it's always fluctuating, but we were presented with a lot of different opportunities to make those career connections. And even if it was with a professor and helping that professor a little bit afterwards or going to a fellowship, something of that nature, I mean, there were lots of opportunities. So I think the school provided a plethora of different career connections uh, for its students.
So the last pro for this video, I will say, is the school tried to be on the forefront of innovation and technology. There is a research center there in the school. So whether it was exploring data and having a data program that, you know, influences, of course, journalism in the journalism field and investigative portion, documentary, I think they they are trying to be on the cusp of the next horizon of journalists, um, you know, that are going to come through this world. We, our technology was a one to me, you know, again, I'm hearing stories of people in their undergraduate years and they're like, oh, we only had one camera or we never learned to edit or we, you know, we didn't have a television station. Now that's something that I think maybe they used to have years ago as far as producing um, um, a weekly or a nightly newscast. We don't, we didn't do that our year, um, but we did have a newsroom course but as far as our cameras, as far as uh, software, um, as far as using social media, I mean, that was something that was built into the curriculum. So that's why I say as a whole, we were given a very robust, like, you know, crash course and then told to use it. Um, so I think that was definitely a pro. When I hear stories about people at their journalism schools, whether it's an undergrad or even graduate school, and I talk about the opportunities that we had, I mean, their experience fails in comparison to ours. So there is, because Columbia has those resources to bring in um, you know, quality professors, to bring in the latest technology, to have the latest software, I think that they meet the bar on that. Now, are you ready for the con? Get ready, boo, because we going in. No. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to go in, but there are things that I think you should think about when it comes to Columbia. I have three things that you should take into account. Number one, con number one, the price. Cha-ching, okay? So the price tag is something that is not very forgiving. Now, to combat that, there are a lot of scholarships out there. I wish I would have applied for more. I applied for a good amount, but you know, I could have tried for a lot more, could have tried, sat in that office till I got some more money, but that's a growth area for me. So if you're like, hey, Bianca, this is something I wanna do, I would look at and, look at and exhaust all scholarship options. If you're like, you still have some school debt, but you really wanna take this on, again, this is not cheap. This is really an investment that you have to make sure you want to take on. Number two, I think the time period is very, very accelerated. So there are, which can be somewhat of a con because you're having to get so much accomplished in a short amount of time period. It kind of works to your favor because in the industry, you're working on tight deadlines anyway. If you don't come in super focused with what area of journalism you want to go in. Like for me, I knew I wanted to create my own video content to go into broadcast, to work at a um, you know, broadcast news station. I knew I wanted to get that experience, but there were some people who they were a little bit more open and flexible. So um, you can feel somewhat rushed because it is such a, an accelerated program. There are programs out there that are two years. So if you're looking to go at a little bit more slower pace, you have a little bit more time, then I would maybe look at those two year programs. And even with the program that I was in the documentary program, we still worked at a very accelerated pace, um, which can be somewhat of a con because you don't have that time to really marinate and explore some things that you may want to explore. Um, it also, if you're looking to ease on into it this is not going to be the program for you like this is the program where you hit on the gas 100 miles per hour from beginning to end that can be a con for a lot of people con number three i was a part of the documentary program and the documentary program was fairly new in compared to the other concentrations and they always kept it pretty small because a documentary requires a lot of attention it requires a lot of focus it requires a lot of um, feedback you know throughout the entire year while you're going through um, the program because a lot of people take their films on to festivals so this is a living piece of art that a lot of people jumpstart their careers on because it had been such a small small program at the beginning they almost i think it was doubled the amount of people they took on the year i did the program i think while their intentions were good to give people more opportunity to experience it it caused a little bit of confusion uh for us on the student side because our professors took on double the amount of people 
Uh, so to expand that quickly, I think again with anything, there can be some things that fall through the, the holes and fall through the cracks. That would be a growth area that, because the documentary requires so much um, focus and so much energy for each group, because you submit your proposals in the beginning, towards the beginning of the, the year, fairly beginning of the year, and they the, that proposal goes in front of a board, goes in front of a board. That board looks at it and they pick the top ones. And then once they're chosen, you partner up with somebody else, someone else in the program. If yours wasn't chosen, for instance, mine wasn't chosen, so I end up partnering up with someone else on their project. I'm extremely grateful for the experience that I had on the project that I worked on, um, which was about female sommeliers in New York. Well, one. It started out as a couple, then we whittle it down to one. But you know, it, as documentaries, they start out sometimes as different projects and then morph over time just given because you're documenting someone's life, life changes. So I'm very grateful for the experience that I had. We had our ups and downs just as any relationship does and any working relationship does. But you know, um, because you're forced to get to know people in a very, very short amount of time period, lock onto a project, learn different styles. And because there, there are so many different groups, I think that was a growth area that shaped a lot of our experiences for the worst because it was like we were going through the growing pains with our professors through that process. Um, still, you got to look back and say, you know what, I'm grateful for that experience. I learned from that. I, I took away from it how to um, respond in those types of situations. But two, uh, you learn how to make your create your own happiness. You learn how to fend for yourself in a situation given a lot of people felt hey because we're paying such a high amount right you know i want to get out all that i can so again given that that experience i think they were able to take a lot of the things that we went through a lot of the advice that we gave surveys and all that kind of stuff and feedback that we gave so that hopefully the the next set of documentary students had a a better experience and they just grew and said hey maybe we don't take as many people but because we were that isolated group that experienced um growth at a at a very uh, quick pace, you know, there are some growing pains there. So that's all. Oh, let me add this. I totally forgot this. I can't believe I forgot. A pro is you're living in the Big Apple. You're living in the city, which is a wonderful opportunity. It's a pro because while it is expensive, which is a con as far as price, but you are going to have so much exposure. So many headquarters are in New York. Um, as far as media outlets, you will have a lot of exposure and contacts to be able to just, you know, go right down the street and, you know, knock on the door of Viacom. Like, you know, that's possible for you. So yes, yeah, in conclusion, it was worth it. My positives outweigh my negatives and I'm working full time as a reporter. That's the goal I set out when I first came into journalism school and when I graduated. Uh, it took some hard work. I didn't get the position immediately right after I graduated, again, which takes some time, but I was able to help co-produce um, a very cool project, a mini documentary about a female sommelier in New York, achieving her dream, so that was a lot of fun. I'm so, so grateful I got that experience. Um, it was really, I look back on it and say, like, I uh, got to meet some amazing people who are, whether it's freelancing, production, helping to produce different projects around the city now, uh, working at world-renowned uh, publications, uh, Condé Nash, or editing, freelance editing, whether they're working in a you know small newspaper in Mississippi somewhere, or wherever, or a, a news station in Texas. I mean, a lot of people are are still taking strides to becoming great journalists and they, not become, they are. They are taking strides to maintain a standard of excellence. So no fake news over here, okay? This is all real, all real news here. And they are upholding great standards um, through investigative pieces on PBS. I mean, I'm so honored to know the people that I came in contact with um, at Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism and yeah so if you're trying to decide i mean you got a yes from me go ahead do it so thanks for watching y'all i really appreciate it i hope you're enjoying the videos you know we keeping up with the two a week you see that two a week two a week yes or you go you made it this far i'm keeping the video short this week do you notice okay because last week some of y'all that watched it like 20 minutes i mean bianca really 
So we cut this one down to 10. So go ahead, subscribe, like, and share. Thanks. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. On the Capitol Hill to work out a compromise health care plan, he lost his voice after his State of the Union speech.